Dear friends, welcome to the show Talk with your doc. I am Dr. Prashant Jani and with me is Dr. Nick Scott and today we are going to talk about cervical cancer. Cervix is a part of female genital tract and uh, it is a very important component, the lower part of the uterus which is called a cervix and it gets a disease called cervical cancer. Uh, in 2016, it is estimated that about 14,990 patients will be diagnosed with cervical cancer in North America, out of which 4,200 patients will die because of cervical cancer. In last 40 years, the death related with the cervical cancer has been decreasing because early detection of the cervical cancer by a screening test called as pap smear testing. Cervical cancer is predominant in all the parts of the world and even in earlier age between 20 to 30 also we can get cervical cancer. We are going to talk today about what are the risk factors for the cervical cancer, what are the diagnostic methods and what are the treatment options and we welcome Dr. Nicholas Escott. He is a senior physician at Thunder Bay Regional Health Science Center and he is also associate professor at Northern Ontario School of Medicine. Welcome Dr. Escott for the show talk with your doc. Thank you Dr. Jani. Please tell us why there is a uh, increase in the incidence of cervical cancer. What are the risk factors for the cervical cancer? Uh, we consider four main risk factors for developing cervical cancer, but there's a fifth one that's the most important one. Mm -hmm. The four usual um, problems or risk factors for developing cervical cancer are first of all, a, an early age of onset of sexual activity. When you say early age, what, what age cutoff you say? Uh, there's no specific cutoff age, but I would say under 16 years old. Okay. So when you have a sexual activity under 16 years of age, there are chances of increased risk of cervical cancer? That's correct. Okay. Now another risk factor, which sort of goes hand in hand with an early age of onset of sexual activity, mm -hmm. is the number of sexual partners that women have. The more partners they have, the more likely they are to develop cervical cancer in the future. Right. So multiple sexual partners can expose you to the risk of some sort of a disease or infection and lead to the cervical cancer? Uh, that's correct. And the, the reason that multiple partners is a risk factor is because the women with multiple partners are more likely to be exposed to the human papillomavirus or HPV. And we, I can talk a little bit more about that in, uh, in a moment. Yes. The other two risk factors, cigarette smoking. Oh, smoking is a risk factor. It definitely is. And there's a reason for that. And that is because the cancer-causing chemicals in the cigarette smoke mm -hmm. circulate through a person's entire body. From the lungs, it circulates all through the body. And these cancer-causing chemicals can actually concentrate in a woman's cervical mucus. Oh. The cervix normally produces mucus mm -hmm. and these bad chemicals can concentrate there. When they do, if that woman is exposed to the HPV or human papillomavirus, mm -hmm. then they are less likely to mount an immune response against that virus if they're a cigarette smoker okay. because of those chemicals. Right. So smoking is a risk factor for cervical cancer as well as so many other cancers. That is correct. So smoking is the main enemy. It is. And the fourth and final risk factor for the standard ones is a family history for cervical cancer. So how does that uh, pose your risk for cervical cancer? We think that's because in some, some women are genetically predisposed to not have such a good immune response immune okay. against the HPV virus. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, then other women in their family may have had cervical cancer in the past. So if family has a history like mother or a cousin or sister has cervical cancer, we should be more careful about the screening. That's right. Now those are four risk factors which predispose a woman to developing cervical cancer in the future. But the single most important risk factor, mm -hmm. which supersedes all four of those, 
is the absence of getting screening with a pap test. Oh, so if you don't screen, then you are automatically exposed uh, or probably getting risk of getting a cervical cancer being not detected. Exactly. Those other risk factors that I mentioned, early age of onset, multiple partners, smoking, family history, mm -hmm. even if you've got all four of those risk factors, if you get regular pap tests, you will get caught before you get cancer, you'll right. get treated, you'll be cured, and you will not get cervical cancer. Right. So getting a pap test on a regular basis is the most important thing to prevent cervical cancer. So cervical smear or the pap smear testing, we will talk more in detail, but it is a very important test and every woman should get it done so that we can detect the cervical cancer at the early age. Every woman should get pap smears done, yes. including homosexual women who have uh, some sort of sexual contact with other women. They should be screened too. Okay. The only woman that probably doesn't need to be screened is mm -hmm. one who has never had any sexual contact. Right. Now tell us about the HPV, a human papillomavirus uh, infection, which is a risk factor for cervical cancer. How does one get this human papillomavirus infection? The human papillomavirus, or HPV, is a sexually transmitted infection. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily require uh, regular sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. Just groin-to-groin -groin contact can spread the HPV virus. So it's basically a tr sexually transmitted virus. virus. And women that don't have sex at all are less exposed to it. So HPV infection, there are various types of human papillomaviruses and uh, they cause various types of diseases. So HPV type 16 and 18, uh, does it uh, cause the wart? Is that right? Beruka or wart? Um, okay, there's about 140 or more types of HPV virus. Yes. There are 18 types that can cause cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. Of those 140, 150, 18 types can cause cervical cancer. Yes. The two most common ones are type 16 and, and, and 18, 18. Yes. And those are the ones that are in the vaccine, which we can talk about later. So this once this HPV virus, which is type 16 and 18, which is predominant one, which can cause uh, cervical cancer, what is the first disease it causes? Does it cause wart and then cause a cancer or how does that No, happen? actually it starts right off the bat by causing precancerous changes on okay. the cervix. Okay. So the woman doesn't know she has a problem. Mm -hmm. There are changes on her cervix which she's not aware of because she doesn't get, have any symptoms. So no symptoms even though you are infected there is no symptom? No. No lesion or nothing? No. You just get, you are infected and you have to get it tested then. The only way to find it is with a pap test. And that's why in the third world where pap tests aren't done, cervical mm -hmm. cancer is the most common most important cancer case. in uh, child, women of, of childbearing age. Thank you, Dr. Escott. We'll take a short break and we'll continue with the HPV testing and the human papillomavirus infection discussion. Thank you. <laughs> 